Hello and welcome, a very warm welcome to the Green Bean. Um, it's been a while. Um, if you're here for the first time, I'm Katie. This little cutie is Jack. And we're coming to you from the Brecon Beacons, which is a national park in South Wales, where we have just recently moved. Um, still settling into the new house. Things are a little bit chaotic, but um, I'm here. I'm happy to be back recording for you again after a winter break. And I've got a lovely episode for you. When I was looking over my projects, trying to decide what to chat to you about, I noticed there was a very definite frog theme emerging. So uh, this is a frog special episode. I've got knitting, I've got a new to me craft because I've recently taken up cross stitch and I've also got some painting. But before we get into the crafting, let's head out onto the mountain for a snowy walk. We had some gorgeous winter weather recently and uh, I hope you enjoy it. I've called this episode The Frogs of Self-Care because I started knitting myself this little companion over Christmas when I was having a little bit of a hard time with my mental health. We had just moved to a brand new place into a house that needs an awful lot of work doing on it. Um, we had a family emergency to deal with and I ended up spending Christmas and New Year by myself. So I was really having a little bit of a struggle and I decided to cast on just a tiny little frog project to um, to cheer myself up and it's been so much fun to work on this project. The pattern is by a designer called Claire Garland who also goes by Dot Pebbles Knits and I don't know about you but I've been seeing these frogs everywhere. Uh, it seems like almost everyone on Instagram has made one or Instagram is constantly recommending me photos and reels that feature these gorgeous little frogs. So it felt inevitable that I was going to want to make one of my own. 
I've seen them dressed up in adorable knitted jumpers, tiny little knitted dungarees. I've seen even someone who dresses their frogs up in little leather shoes. It's all too adorable. Um, so yeah, I had to cast on a frog of my own. I'm using some really deep stash yarn, some old Rowan fine tweed, which has long been discontinued. And I only had a couple of balls, so I don't know what on earth else I was going to do with it. So it's nice to find a use for it. And I've combined it with some silk mohair from Viola, which I had left over from a jumper I made a few years ago. Again, just a tiny amount, not really a lot of use for anything else, but perfect for a tiny little frog. I decided I wanted my little friend to have some weight, so I made this little bean bag to go inside them. Um, I used just some pieces of felt and some imitation lead shot, which I've purchased from Bare Basics. That's a um, website that I use often for toy making supplies. They have a gorgeous range of uh, glass and safety teddy bear eyes, which is how I ended up on their website, I was looking for the perfect eyes for my frog. But I also found this imitation lead shot, which is basically feels like ball bearings. Um, I'm guessing that in the olden days, they actually used to fill teddy bears with real lead shot and give them to children. That doesn't seem, uh, yeah, seems like something that would have happened. Um, but obviously now we don't use real lead. But I love the weight that those um, those beads have given to my little frog. I want them to be able to sit up by themselves. So um, yeah, it was nice to put those inside. I will also put wires in the legs because I want my frog's legs to be somewhat poseable so I can take cute photos of them. Um, and I found these wires that my partner had lying around, presumably from some kind of electronics. Um, they're just plastic coated metal wires and I've been straightening them out with pliers and they look pretty good. The um, pattern itself includes the instructions for putting the wires into the legs. Um, so that's the next step for me, is getting the legs on my frog. I couldn't decide between safety eyes or glass eyes. Safety eyes are much easier to fit, you don't have to do any sewing, you just pop a plastic washer on and they're very permanently attached. But um, I always prefer how glass eyes look and because this frog was meant to be a kind of mental health comforting companion, I'm intending to carry it around in my pocket. Um, and I worried that the plastic safety eyes might get scratched going in and out of my pocket all the time. So I chose some glass eyes and I chose ones that have just the faintest hint of green. Um, I think they're perfect. Now that my frog friend is almost done, I feel sure that I'm going to have to get into the um, making of some clothes or shoes or something for them. I can't uh, let my frog go around in the nude like this for too long. I'm going to have to make some mini frog clothes. But for now, I'm just, uh, just enjoying the finishing touches. It's been an absolutely lovely pattern to work from. I won't... Uh, tell you it hasn't been a bit fiddly, especially with the silk mohair. The yarn is very kind of grippy and a little bit tricky to work with, but the satisfaction of seeing this perfect little frog shape come together is well worth the effort and I've really enjoyed making this little friend.
My second frog knitting project is a garment for myself and it's based on one that I found on the internet when I was starting to dive deep into my frog fixation. I wondered if there was a cute frog jumper that I could make for myself and I came across a design by Danish designer Lena Holm Samso. Um, it's called Verna Fro. Um, I don't speak Danish so if that's the incorrect, incorrect pronunciation I apologise. Um, it's a really cute all over colourwork jumper with a tessellating frog pattern and it was published in a children's book in Danish in 2008. So naturally I couldn't get my hands on this pattern and probably wouldn't be able to understand it if I did. Um, but Lena the designer has a website that is bilingual both in Danish and English so I was able to write and ask if I could purchase the chart. I didn't need the knitting pattern for a child size jumper but I figured just with the colour work chart I would be able to extrapolate out and draft a basic jumper pattern for myself and Lena very kindly let me purchase the frog chart and here is my little swatch. I'm using two yarns again from Stash. The background is a Jameson's of Shetland um, spindrift colour, one of my favourites. Um, it won't surprise you to hear that it's called lichen. It's a kind of slightly, ever so slightly greenish beige and the colour of the frogs is a beautiful mohair blends yarn from Black Yarns. It's 50% mohair, 50% manx and the mohair gives it this absolutely gorgeous lustre which I think helps the frogs stand out from the background a little bit. I'm loving the combination of these two yarns together. I don't have a lot of progress on the actual garment to show you. Um, something tells me this is going to be a long, slow burn of a project. I've cast on my 300 and something stitches for the ribbing at the bottom of the body. And you might notice that I'm knitting my ribbing flat. That's because I find when I do knitting um, ribbing in the round, particularly one by one or twisted ribbing, it always skews off in one direction. And I think that must be because the way I tension the yarn around my fingers, I'm adding a bit of extra twist in there. And because when you're knitting in the round, you're always going in the same direction. So it tends to just give my knitting a little bias in one direction. I find that if I work it flat then that counteracts that effect somewhat. Um, don't worry I'm not knitting the whole all over colour work jumper flat. Um, as soon as I finish the ribbing I will join to work in the round. Um, I'll make sticks for the armholes. It's going to be a very simple boxy shape, straight sleeves, um, just a basic jumper because really the hero is this gorgeous colour work frog pattern and yeah okay knowing my pace at all over colour work projects it's probably going to take me three years but I don't care I'm happy to have this project on the needles. I took up a new craft recently and I feel like it came a little bit out of nowhere. I'm slightly embarrassed to say that I always 
um, looked down a little bit on cross stitch or didn't really understand it. Um, but that would be because I hadn't found a cross stitch pattern that really inspired me to want to give the craft a go. And now I have given it a go, I can tell you I absolutely get it and I'm really enjoying it. So one thing the internet does really well these days is figure out the kind of thing that you like looking at and give you more of it. So the more I looked at frog related things, the more frog related things the internet was showing me. And I stumbled upon this gorgeous cross stitch pattern by Mama Witch cross stitch called uh, Camping Toads, I think. So, I mean, arguably not frogs, but near enough. And I just love this design. It's so playful and charming and it was inspiring enough that it made me want to give cross stitch a go. Now, even though I haven't done any cross stitch before, I know a fair bit about it because I used to work in a craft shop for several years and many of our customers were cross stitchers. So I helped a lot of people with cross stitch projects. I sold a lot of cross stitch fabrics and threads. I got to understand some of the basics of the craft without having tried it. So I wasn't a going in completely cold. Um, so some things I knew before I started was that working with black fabric wasn't going to be the easiest option and that perhaps taking on such a big project like the Camping Toads was maybe not the best place to start. It might be a little bit overwhelming. So I decided to start with something smaller. I picked this design from the same designer. It's called Amanita Froggy and it won't be hard for you to see why I liked this one. It turns out that cross stitch appeals to me very much. I absolutely love the meticulous stitch by stitch, square by square way that you work very precisely to recreate the image. Um, it's extremely satisfying and it was just what I needed over Christmas when I was having a little bit of a hard time. I didn't want to think creatively about any project particularly. So just having a pattern that I could follow, do what I was told was really soothing and straightforward. And I have been loving it. It was a little bit surreal at first because when you're knitting, you're often looking at a tiny chart and interpreting it into stitches that are much bigger than the chart you're looking at. Whereas cross stitch works the other way around. I was looking at this chart really very zoomed in on my iPad and interpreting it into the tiniest of stitches. I worked the Amanita Froggy on 20 count Ada and I'm working the um, Camping Toads on linen instead. I love the way that cross stitch looks on linen. It's a little bit more um, uniform background. Obviously it adds a layer of complication. It's a little bit uh, more counting involved to stitching on linen, but I'm really pleased with how it's looking. And I've made a discovery that um, there's an extra benefit to using the iPad for looking at the chart. Not only can I zoom in as much as I need to, to really see, you know, really see the stitches. I think if I was working with a paper chart where the stitches were tiny, I would be tearing my hair out. But because I can really zoom in, um, it's really easy to see where your stitches need to go. But also the screen of the iPad offers a little bit of backlight, which um, when you've got your black fabric tensioned on a frame, you can more easily see the holes if you've got the iPad sitting on your lap. It shines a bit of light through the black fabric and makes it a little bit easier to work with. It's not completely straightforward, um, but it does make it easier. I'm using 36 count linen, which um, because you stitch over two threads when you're working on linen as opposed to Ada, it's the equivalent of 18 stitches per inch. And I'm using all of the colours, uh, DMC thread colours, 
recommended by the designer and I'm using two strands to do each cross stitch. Um, and it's been so soothing, the repetitive motion of working on this and doing exactly as I'm told, just focusing on it stitch by stitch without needing to make any decisions. Sometimes you just need a project like that and this has been perfect for seeing me through a difficult month or so. I guess it wasn't going to be long before this frog obsession crept into my drawing and painting work. And I keep a notebook by the side of my bed at night because I often wake up in the middle of the night with what I think is a fantastic idea, scribble it down, and by the morning it doesn't make any sense or I realise that it wasn't that great an idea. Sometimes there's some treasure there. And one morning this week, I woke up and there was a note by the side of the bed that said, Dapper frog in dungarees goes foraging for mushrooms. And I just knew that I had to interpret that into an illustration. So I started with a couple of quick pencil sketches. And I really love this one. It's my favourite. I love the 
kind of joy and energy that it captures. And there's something about these tiny quick sketches that sometimes gets lost when you translate them into a larger image. So in a moment, I'll show you how I enlarge this actual sketch and get it onto my painting paper. But first I did a color study, which is just a basically a pretend quick painted sketch, um, which I used my iPad for. I've been really getting into using the iPad for these because it's very quick. All the colors are available. I don't have to mix anything or make any mess. So this was just a quick five minute um, color study to think about the palette I was going to use for this painting. So in order to enlarge this thumbnail sketch and not lose the um, the energy of those quick sketch lines, I snap a quick picture on my phone and then email it to myself so I can open it up in Photoshop on my computer and enlarge it to the size that I want it to be on my painting paper. Then in order to transfer the image onto my watercolour paper, I'm using my window. I've, I suppose I could use a light box if I had one, but I don't. I find the window just as useful. Um, I have the image face down on the window, so I'm drawing the pencil outlines on the back of the image. And then when I place the drawing face up, onto my watercolour paper so that my pencil lines I just drew are on the back. If I carefully scribble over where those lines I've made are, then it transfers some of the graphite pencil marks on the back onto my watercolour paper. So it gives me a faint outline of my drawing that I can work up into a final sketch. And um, yeah, it gives me exactly the shape and proportions and movement that I captured in my initial tiny line drawing. So I haven't lost any of that energy or excitement from my original sketch. Now I'm ready to start painting and I'll show you the beginning of this process, the first few layers of colour, but you won't see me finish the whole thing because I will actually probably spend a couple of weeks working on this. Not a couple of weeks full time, but dipping in and out of it here and there. Um, usually while I'm waiting for a layer of colour to dry, I will walk away, do some work on another thing, come back to it a couple of hours later, put the next layer of colour on, so on and so forth. So it's a slow process building up over a period of time. Um, but it's nice to dive in and, and begin a new painting. So I hope you enjoy watching that and I will share the finished thing with you in the next episode.
I've just realised that I've recorded this entire episode without switching on any lights, and the sun has just dipped behind the mountain. Um, so I think that might be time to wrap up the episode. Um, part of me wants to re-record it with the lights on, but I'm going to resist that perfectionism. Um, it'll be fine as it is, and I'm sorry for the slightly weird lighting of this ending. Thank you so much for watching, for being here. If you support the podcast on Patreon, thank you. I'm incredibly grateful for you. I could not make these videos without financial support, so thank you for being part of the team that makes these videos possible. Um, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye. Thank you.